continue our conversation with the second in command of the EFF and on the line is Biedere from Cape Town. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Biedere. What is it that you want to say? Hi, good evening, Jane. I would just like to ask Mr. Schwamba the following question. In terms of expropriation of lands without compensation, you indicated that all land should belong to the government. My question is, how will we empower the unemployed? How will people that cannot afford a next meal, how do they expect them to go and rent the, to rent the land from it? Thank you. I'm not sure if I heard that question properly. She, she was to... saying that um, if you expropriate the land and put it in the state's hands, how is this going to benefit the unemployed? Look, when the state is having custodianship of all South Africa's land, it will then be able to redistribute it equally to all South Africans. And that redistribution must then reflect the demographics of South Africa that because the black African majority constitute 80% of South Africa, they should occupy 80% of South Africa in terms of land ownership and control. And then we'll then see how the other uh, uh, racial categories get to occupy land in South Africa. The reason why we're saying that the state must be custodian of all land is because the attempt to redistribute land piece by piece, buying a piece of land there and there, has dismally failed. 50 billion rands later, only like 6% of the land was able to be bought from the previous or the, the, the current uh, owners of the land who are the white colonial settlers, and the state has dismally failed to do that. And in the pace in which it has been moving, it means that if you have redistributed 6% within 24 years, it means in 48 years would have redistributed 12%. Okay, but let me so that is, the, that is the challenge that we're dealing with. Then we're saying that let us agree in principle that one, let us amend the constitution to permit for expropriation of land without compensation. Two, let us pass a legislation on redistribution of land in terms of how then do we allocate land to different individuals for different purposes. It might be residential purposes, it might be uh, uh, agricultural purposes, it might be commercial purposes, let, let me ask it might you be quickly. educational purposes that get to deal with all of those issues. There. I want to quickly that ask is, you yes. something before we lose uh, Moran on the line from yes. the ball. Where do you get your confidence in the government from, in the state here? I mean, look at what's been happening with SOEs. I mean, how are they going to suddenly change the way they operate and suddenly become super efficient? and wiping but out corruption I, I, and land flowing again, freely. Again, 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 that is a very lazy argument. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, where, where the, do you the, get the, the, hope the from market that? model of land redistribution has dismally failed. Look at how capitalism has excluded majority of our people. Look at how capitalism... I'm talking about government companies. here now. No, I'm which saying can't even that... They so can't even say their own can't say, say, Like, in terms of what is the model of ownership of land in South Africa now, you have got portions of land that are owned by the state. That includes the forest trees that uh, deal with plantations which are being utilized now by Sapi and Mondi for paper purposes. Almost all that land is being leased to those companies for the forestry purposes and the business in that particular sector. There's not been any disruption. And by the way, uh, the land which is attracting most investments in South Africa is land that is in the special economic zones. All that land in Richards Bay, in Kuha, in East London, in the Dube trade port in KwaZulu Natal, and now will be in Malut Apofum and in the Musina, is owned by the state, and that is where most investments get to happen in South Africa in terms of what happens. So, so the issue that uh, the state cannot okay. deal you, you with have, land allocation for specific purposes. You believe they can if they wrong. want to. It can. Okay. All right. Let's bring in Moran from the Val. Go, go ahead, Moran. It's Maureen. How are you? Sorry, Maureen. Go ahead. How are you? Okay, uh, Mr. Sibamba, I would like you to please explain to me, since that you and Malema hate white people and Indians, what is it then that my child, as a future citizen of this country, is supposed to be looking at as a na one nation for everybody? What must I say to my son what a rainbow nation is? Because you are teaching him now racism is a way to go. Look, the EFF doesn't hate white people. None of us hate white people. I'm talking to you, you're a white person. If I hated white people, I wasn't going to come and speak to you. Uh, we hate and despise white supremacy and, and, and undue white privilege that was bequeathed to the current people in South Africa through colonialism and settler colonialism that got to rape and, and, and harass our people and kill 
thousands of our people uh, defenselessly in terms of how it was because the colonizers took over our land through uh, murdering our people through rape, through dispositions and forced removals. And we, wa we hate the white supremacy whose foundation is the land ownership, whose foundation is the economic inequalities. That is why we are then saying we are in an economic freedom fighter that seeks to take back the land, to take back the economic resources for equal redistribution. And but we but think that is going punished? to deal well, with the think, racism. Do you think people and the white will be unduly that punished the white minorities when now. that happens? I mean, how do you determine who gets what? And, and, I, and that's probably what Maureen is saying as well. I mean, is there a place for everybody in the South Africa? Is there a place? There's, I mean, how are you going to make sure that, that it's, it's is, correct who gets what? There is a place for everybody. Like, uh, we will never pass a policy that uh, white people will not gain access to the land when it's under the custodianship of the state. We're going to gain access to the land, all of us. But that land ownership ultimately must be reflective of the demographics of South Africa. Will you that take it, it away? It cannot from be correct. It cannot be correct that the white minority, which is 5% of the population, as is the case now, continues to own and control more than 80% of South Africa's land. Will you take that it away from the Zulu King? Let me explain to you something which is very simple. The Ingonyama Trust Board administers the land which used to belong to the KwaZulu homeland. Ingonyama Trust Board is an entity of the Department of Rural Development. It's a state entity. So in actual fact, if you check even the Ingonyama Trust Act itself, it admits that ultimately the state is in ownership of the land which Ngonyama Trust Board is currently administering. So there's no need to then deal with that in that format that of saying... But that's not going very well, is it? It's no, not a very good example. We've got corruption no, there, the way women are treated. I mean, that's not, not exactly, the perfect example. Yes, exactly, exactly what we said when we met with uh, the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa, Contra Lesa, to say that let us change the rules and the, the parameters within which traditional leadership allocates land, particularly in rural areas, that there must be consistency in terms of the principles that are applied, that there must not be gender discrimination, that there must not be allocation of the same piece of land to many people, and that there must not be charging of any leases and rentals, as is the case with the Ingonyama Trust Board now, which charges individuals either 1,000 round or 4,000 round or an inconsistent amount for the land, for, for those people to utilize the land. In Guanyama Trust uh, Act or board will play a role in terms of allocation of land, but there must be those principles that we're talking about. And that land and the, the board itself is an entity of the Department of Rural Development. So it's part of the state. It will just have to be aligned into the constitutionality of South Africa that deals with issues of discrimination and the inconsistency in terms of application of rules. Okay, we've got another call on the line. Tebojo from Soweto, go ahead. Hi, hi, good evening, how are you? I think we both yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so my question is for Floyd. So the EFF now seemingly has a history of violence. Floyd manhandles journalists and they are fierce celebration. They, the security guards beat up civilians. So is this the kind of EFF that you should expect come 2019? And when, and when I mean, and when they become the next governing party of the Republic of South Africa, should we expect more violence from them? Because seemingly they do have a track record of violence with them. Thank you. Thank you, Tiboka. So that is called reductionism. I mean, like, why would you want to think that a political organization because of an incident of one person having yeah, a scaffold you are supposed with to show the moral high no. ground. That is, that is, that is, and, and that those is a mistakes very, can't it's happen. It's a very, no, it's a very sorry, I, I would actually, it's a very sorry. This organization has been in existence for five years now, for heaven's sake. Yeah, but you don't want We've to see these attacking sake. journalists. And you're talking about two incidents and then you say, you then say that therefore, when the EFF becomes government, is going to be a violent organization. Okay, well, that answer, is a story. The, answer the question. That, that's the, the impression EFF, that, that Tebogo no, has been given. I'm making an observation first, and then the answer is that the EFF is not going to be a violent government. The EFF is going to be an organization of peace and make sure that everyone else exists properly and that the rule of law is applied consistently to those that violate the law, even those that become violent against other people for no, for no clear reason. So that is one of the issues that must be clarified. We're not a violent organization and will never be violent. And to then want to conclude that the EFF is violent because of some 
minute issues is a reductionist and it's a very sorry observation. Okay, but for some people it doesn't seem minute and, uh, minute and attacking the media is, is never minute. Do you think that relationship might been... change? Do you think it'll change in, um, with the elections coming up? And I'm just wondering what your game plan is for the 2019 elections. What do you need to do to get more followers? Where to do, you know, do, you know, do you know, Jane, uh, maybe we're not here in South Africa when the EFF was formed and it existed for... I know all about years. you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's give you some quick uh, reminder. I, I, I know, know all about, about I'm, I'm looking forward now about. because we'd run yeah, out let's of time. Yeah, let's deal with that, right? The, know, FF, the FF has been very robust with media that is embedded, that takes sides and doesn't report fairly. There was a radio station which is about to close now, I know a TV station called the uh, ANN7, Gupta TV. Yes. We from the beginning said that we're not going to engage with them, we isolated them. And part of the media and everyone else was celebrating that, but we took a position. And we do that consistently that if media is embedded, if media it takes sides openly, like ENCA is doing with this promotion of Ramaphosa every day else, oh. we expose that on a constant basis and, and robustly so. It is not attack on the media, it's a robust engagement that has to happen in society. In a democratic society, we must openly engage each other. The media doesn't have monopoly to distort political parties and attack them, and then you say then that political parties must not respond in their defense. We always do that, but we'll never shut down a media house uh, 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 as now as a political party or as government. We okay. allow them That's to good exist news. in so their own spaces. Quickly yes. throwing ahead to 2019, what's your game plan? What are your political aspirations? Look, we are going to be government of South Africa. Uh, the EFF, whatever happens in 2019, we are going to be government of South Africa. Our intention for 2019 is to speak to each and every voter in South Africa to illustrate to them that political power without economic power is meaningless. To just vote without gaining access to the land, without gaining access to the economy, without creating sustainable and durable jobs for all is not going to bring about durable and sustainable lives to our people. And that is the message that we're going to be driving to all South Africans, the youth, all South Africans must understand that we are the organization of the future that is going to bring about prosperity for all. I mean, let's leave it there, Floyd Chibambu. Thank you very much for talking to Thank us. Thank you. Is it a dangerous drive? South Africa's truck drivers face challenges you may not know about. Tonight, ENCA's Checkpoint investigates. That's next.